Good afternoon, and welcome to the City Club of Cleveland. My name is Jan Roller, and I'm president of the Board of Trustees of the club. Here at the City Club, we address and discuss important issues of the day, and we have continuously done this since our beginning 97 years ago. Our topic today is financial aid in higher education. We're glad you're here with us in our audience at 850 Euclid Avenue in downtown Cleveland, or tuned in on one of our many media broadcasts throughout the country. To hear our speaker, Dr. Lester A. Lefton, President of Kent State University. Kent State, located about 30, 38 miles south of Cleveland, is one of the nation's largest university systems with its eight campuses, 280 academic programs, and with its increased enrollment of 37,500 undergraduate and graduate students. It is the only public university in Northeast Ohio in the top 150 in US News and World Report. President John Quincy Adams made a statement about leadership. He said, if your actions inspire others to dream more, to learn more, to do more, and become more, you are a leader. From a, just a brief review of Dr. Lefton's efforts at Kent State, it can easily be seen that he is a leader the university should be very proud of. Since coming to the university in 2006, he has demonstrated a strong commitment to diversity and created a broad-based commission on inclusion and the university's first vice presidential position related to diversity. In recognition of an increasingly global, global economy and society, he has intensified efforts in the university's emphasi emphasis on international programs, including a number of agreements with leading universities in China. He has set new higher goals for faculty research. He has led a fast track effort to create a college of public health and a university wide awareness about the importance of campus sustainability. Those efforts resulted in the Arbor Day Foundation selecting Kent State as Ohio's first tree campus USA in recognition of the university's environmental stewardship. The list of programs and activities and changes undertaken by Kent State with Dr. Lefton's leadership is long and significant. But in addition to those efforts and those listed in today's program, he is respected internationally for his scholarship in the field of experimental psychology and is known nationally as a passionate advocate for undergraduate education. He's an award-winning teacher with 36 years of university teaching and his introductory psychology textbook, now in its ninth edition, is used in college classrooms across the country. Dr. Lefton brought a wealth of administrative experience with him to Kent State. He has served as a senior vice president for academic affairs and provost at Tulane University, dean of George Washington University's Colleges of Arts and Sciences, and dean of the University of South Carolina's College of Liberal Arts. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Dr. Lester Lefton, to the City Club podium. Thank you for this warm welcome, Jan. I appreciate the introduction. On the Friday before Labor Day, to have this many people gathered together here in downtown Cleveland is a real thrill. Uh, so many friends and relatives are in the group. Um, it should be an interesting few minutes together. I'd especially like to acknowledge uh, uh, Steve Kalecki and Jacqueline Woods, who are members of my board of trustees, uh, who are joining me here today. And I know a couple of other members of my board are listening in. You know, leaving campus this morning, uh, a young woman who works in the library stopped me and said, where are you going? And uh, I said, well, I'm going to the City Club of Cleveland. And she said, oh, you know, I listen to programs at the City Club of Cleveland all the time. They have really good speakers. I said, well, I agree. <laughs> She, she then said, well, who's speaking today? <laughs> so I, I turned to her and I said, oh, some old guy. You know, I'm sure it'll be good. Uh, I won't tell you who she is, but MJ, this is for you. <laughs> Seriously, I, I'm really delighted to be on this side of the podium uh, at this time of year. I, I really don't expect accept many off-campus engagements at this time of year because campus is absolutely wildly busy. With eight campuses and 37,000 students, everybody's sort of awakening to the new year. It's really great to see the students back on campus. Um, it's kind of like the swallows returning back to Capistrano. We see students um, who come back with 
flip-flops and iPhones and laptops, and it's very exciting. Even for a seasoned academic who's seen it happen so many, many times, there's an energy that's really palpable and very exciting. I only wish uh, you could join me and, and look outside of my window and see what's going on on campus. It's really very exciting. It's exciting because these students are embarking on uh, the most important part of their lives, at least from my point of view. It, these are years of self-discovery, years of intellectual growth, uh, of gaining knowledge and skills to proceed uh, in life, professionally and personally. Today's students are really facing a dramatically different world than one that most of us looked at when we finished school. They have to be able to compete and cooperate in a global economy with people from different cultures and countries. They have to commit to lifelong learning, and they're likely to switch careers multiple times. It wasn't that way when we went to school. Many of us uh, went to school. You expected to stay with GM or IBM or 3M for many, many years. Today's students will change jobs five times, and they know it. They may change careers multiple times. It's already a reality that most good jobs require education beyond high school these days. Does everyone need a college degree to succeed in life and to have a secure future? Clearly not. Uh, but with so many good blue collar jobs becoming extinct and the manufacturing se sector, particularly in Northeast Ohio, changing, we all know that advanced education is really one of the best bets for a successful future, certainly at least economically. Yet many people, from high school students to adults, uh, adults who are facing new economic realities, don't consider education beyond high school. That's especially true here in Ohio. They believe the cost is prohibitive, that it's impossible to juggle classes, jobs, and family responsibilities, or that they don't have the right scholastic stuff to, to make it in higher education. To a large extent, this really stems from a widespread misperception in, about options, about accessibility, and especially about affordability. My goal today is to dispel some of those misperceptions. I'm not going to tell you that the cost of higher education beyond high school is negligible, and I've never minimized the fact that families and individuals often sacrifice uh, quite significantly to make sure that they have a college education. But the truth is that for most Ohioans, some form of higher education is accessible and it's affordable. Media reports about higher education often focus on one slice of the post-secondary pie, the one devoted to four-year colleges and comprehensive universities. But they're not the only options available to high school students. A wide range of educational opportunities with a wide range of price points is available to high school graduates in Ohio, and I'd like to talk about that for a little bit. In addition to four-year institutions, our region is home to an impressive variety of career colleges and technical schools, community colleges, university regional campuses, including seven that operate under the Kent State banner. The cost of attending a technical school or a community college is significantly lower than the cost of attending a public university just as the cost of attending a public university is significantly lower than the cost of attending a private university. And different post-secondary institutions have different admissions criteria, from open admissions for any high school graduate to admissions based upon multiple criteria and rigorous criteria. When it comes to advanced education, my feeling is you can't make a wrong choice in Ohio. No matter where you are, no matter where you enter the post-secondary continuum, you can move up, you can move around, and you can transfer to other schools. 